Sericulture is an ancient agro based labor intensive industry in India dating back to 2nd century BC. It is being practiced in more than 30 countries across tropical and temperature regions. Presently, China, India, South Korea, Japan and Brazil are the leading silk producing countries. Japan which was once a leading silk producer has slowly shifted to other commercial enterprises. India is the only country which cultures all the four commercial known varieties of silk like mulberry, tusser, erri and muga. It ranks second in mulberry silk production in the world next to China. Indian silk industry continues to be in the unorganized sector compared to well organized countries like China and Japan. Central Silk Board giving many scientific touches to the farmers by taking the help from government of India. It is required to change many research and development activities to overcome difficulties and compete internationally. It is certainly not possible for small and marginal farmers to become big farmers in a short period or small reelers to become large scale reelers in an overnight. Mulberry silk in India has occupied a premier position with an annual production silk has become inseparable part of world silk culture and tradition since several centuries because of the fine quality, luster stain and traditional colors. Indian silk needs many scientific methods as to be adopted in cultivating mulberry, disease free egg production, rearing of silkworms, maintenance of disease free silkworms, cocoon collections, transportation of cocoons and reeling of silk. The industry has undergone many severe problems due to various factors like disease and wide fluctuations in the price of raw silk. Research and developments are fundamental to the progress of any industry and sericulture is no exempted to it. Realizing this, both central and state sponsored research institutes which were established essentially to link research and development to sericulture and reach it to the doorsteps of those people depending upon the industry for livelihood. In developing country like India, agriculture and agro based industry play a vital role in the improvement of rural economy. It is an agriculture country with large segment peoples is engaged in cultivation for different food crops. The limited availability of land and the limited cash returns and agriculture being confined to one or two season in the year have made villages to look for supporting rural industry such as sericulture, animal husbandry, poultry and sugar cane industry besides some other cash crops. Agriculture and sericulture are adopted simultaneously by the agriculturist in regions where the ecological conditions are favorable. Sericulture is an important commercial activity undertaken mostly by the small and medium farmers in the country. In India, over 3 million peoples are employed in different fields of sericulture such as mulberry cultivation, rearing of silkworms, cocoon collections, reeling industry and silk industry. It is a cottage industry and provide ample work for the women flock in the rural areas in rearing silkworms. While the male members work in the field, majority in various sericulture and silk industry activities are carried out predominantly by rural women. Recently, the enforcing of new ideas by research institutes both in mulberry cultivation and silkworm handling among sericulturists, the industry is now practiced as a main profession and a major cash crops of the country. In India, all five varieties of silk worms are raised for producing this natural silk. Bombax mori, the domesticated silkworm feed on leaves of mora species to produce the best quality of silk fiber among the different varieties of silk produced in the country. This silkworm rearing mostly in 
southern part of India, particularly Karnataka, which is considered as the home of sericulture and also largely rearing in Jammu and Kashmir and some part of West Bengal. Antriya Asama is confined to only Brahmaputra Valley of India in the world. It is produced the famous Muga silk, also known as the golden yellow silk. The Muga silk is produced by the silk of Antriya Asame, which is mostly a feed on plants belongs to the family Lauraceae. Tropical tussar silk is produced by the silkworm Anthrea melita, which feeds on terminal arjuna, terminal tomentosa, soria robusta. Grown in the thick forest of Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh and Varisha. Anthrea proili, which feed on natural food plants like kurkas, serrata, which is primary food plant, found in abundance in the entire sub Himalayan belt extending from Jammu and Kashmir, Arunachala Pradesh, Manipur, Nagaland, Uttar Pradesh, Assam and Mizoram. The system of rearing oak tussar silkworm is this reasons largely depend on the geographical distribution of these food plants, their phenology and prevailing agroclimatic condition. The oak tussar culture has great substantial employment and income generation potential especially for the human flock living on the hills with an hedge on conservation for the ecosystem and biodiversity. Ericulture is originated in Brahmaputra valleys of Assam and northeastern part of India and Varissa. The silkworm Philosomia resini which produce the eri silk feed on particularly resinous communities and other food plants available. Mulberry silk is produced largely in the state of Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, West Bengal and Jammu and Kashmir which are traditionally sericultural states contributing to about 98 percent of the raw silk production in the country. About 85 percent of the country production is contributed by the Karnataka state by rearing multi hotin hybrids of silkworms and this activity enables the sericulturists to harvest 5 to 6 crops a year and sometimes 10 crops a year. In Jammu and Kashmir owing to hit good climate during autumn and spring is producing silk by rearing univoltine silkworms. Sericulture is also introduced in all the states in territories of the country. The government of India and the state government has given greater emphasis for the development of sericulture industry. A central silk board has been directly implemented certain pilot projects for the development of both mulberry and non-mulberry sericulture. With the advent of World Bank added National Sericulture Project NSP. The sericulture has extended in non traditional areas in Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Bihar, Gujarat, Kerala, Haryana, Orisha, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Manipura, Nagaland, Sikkim, Tripura, Meghalaya, and Punjab. Karnataka has large range of cash crops with varied agroclimatic conditions. It ranges from very moist rainy monsoon climate on the west coast, the western gods and the Malnad areas to the arid and semi arid climate of the interior central and north part of Karnataka state. Karnataka is the pioneer state in the production of mulberry silk which shares 85 percent of this total silk production in the country. It is one of the important cash crops mainly in the southern part of Karnataka as practiced more than 200 years. In this state, rarers are practicing improved methods of mulberry cultivation and silkworm rearing. Under farm development programs of World Bank schemes, the farmers are extended to a loan for plantation, for buying equipment and for construction of rearing house. Knowing all this, to strengthen the sericulture industry in the state, the government has established Center of Excellence Institute, Karnataka State Sericulture Research and Development Institute in Talagatpura near Bangalore. The institute has been actively interacted with the national and international research organization through overseas programs and coordinate research works. The institute is also involved with the public and private sector industrial 
organizations of the state and central government. The institute has been recognized by the Department of Science and Technology and Department of Scientific and Industrial Research, Government of India, Central Silk Board, etc. Sericulture is also introduced in postgraduate centers by universities in Karnataka, namely Bangalore University, Bangalore, Karnataka University, Darwad, University of Agriculture Science, Bangalore, and University of Mysore, Mysore. The successful silk industry in India depending on the successful mulberry cultivation as a pre request for many good crops. Many farmers are not following a recommended cultivation practices in mulberry. Generally, in every year, the farmers harvesting 5 to 6 mulberry leaf and equal number of cocoon crops in a year. With our harvest of the mulberry leaf, farmers usually not maintaining proper fertilization management to mulberry has been leading to heavy loss of nutrients. Every year, the soil is losing this kind of nutrient, the leaf quality and the yield are constantly reducing over each harvest and season. High yielding varieties of mulberry are no exemption to this kind of reality. This situation is common with almost all the small and marginal farmers. Leaf harvest under this low nutrient soil conditions, it is difficult to accept the healthy silk one and good cocoons harvest. It is known that even with a better silk home seed, the cocoon yield will be low when the silk worms are fed and the mulberry leaf that are nutritionally deficient. The systematic cultivation of mulberry, the food plants of Bombax Mori is the first step in production of mulberry silk. The quality of leaf is dependent on mulberry variety, climatic conditions, soil type and its innate fertility, cultivating practices, the fertilizer management, irrigation and harvesting method. The soil fertility as a direct bearing on the nutrition status of leaf, the benefit of adding mineral element to the soil to improve the soil fertility for the plant growth is known for many years. It was still controversy matter for which minerals element functions as nutrient for the plant growth. Many experiments are conducted in various plants growth and develop for the plants are ongoing. The mulberry is cultivated in a diverse range of soils. Some part of the country the mulberry garden is cultivated in sandy soil and some part in black soil, some places mulberry cultivated in red soil. Mulberry variety and cultivation. Mulberry leaf production depends mainly on three important factors namely variety, cultivation practices and plant production measures. Mulberry is a heterogeneous predominantly unisexual cross pollinated and vegetatively propagated perennial plant. It exhibits a wide range of variations in each and phenotypic characteristic. In some genotype, wide range of variability are observed in inflorescence, flower, floral parts. In this context, the systematic studies should be conducted before selecting the variety for breeding. The variety selected for cultivation must respond well optimum agronomic inputs and plant production measures. Some of the mulberry varieties are local variety commercially called as Naticadi is extensively cultivated in traditional areas. Kanwa 2 or Mysore M5 is improved varieties and MR2 varieties is resistance to disease. Some of the varieties are S36, S30, S54, Viswa and V1 varieties are available. Some of the mulberry varieties like S13, S34, RFS135 and RFS 175 are very suitable in rain fed condition. The mulberry is raised as a bush plantation in Karnataka and West Bengal, whereas it is grown as a tree in Jammu Kashmir. Four Indian species of Morus, namely Morus salba, Morus indica, Morus serrata, and Morus levigata, are raised as main food plants of silkworms.
quality seed is the backbone of seed culture industry. Management of seed production, disease free egg, transportation and incubation play an important role in the egg production. It is very important to incorporate the present scientific system to produce quality egg right from seed crop rearing to egg production. Temperature, light and humidity play a major role in the egg production. Select only good cocoons from the lot of the further process of egg production in order to produce disease free silkworm seeds. Mother moth examination should be conducted either individuals or mass mother examination to avoid fibrin diseases. Different types of silkworm rearing. Rearing house is to be designed based on the brushing capacity and method of rearing. Optimal environmental conditions such as temperature, relative humidity, ventilation and hygiene are very much required during the rearing of silkworms. In order to provide these conditions for the silkworms, a separate rearing house for both chalky rearing and silkworm rearing is essential. The rearing house should be near to mulberry garden is very ideal for feeding fresh mulberry leaves to silkworm avoiding loss of moisture in the mulberry leaves. Chalky rearing. Rearing of young age silkworm is very important stage in the mulberry rearing. Rearing of young age silkworm up to second mould is called chalky rearing which usually lasts up to 10 days. This stage of silkworm usually required ideal environmental conditions and feeding tender sculent leaves make the larvae grow robust and make more stress tolerance during late age rearing. Late age rearing silkworms. Late age silkworm rearing also called as larva stage is usually completed in 14 to 16 days. The silkworm during their larva period possess 5 different stages by undergone different molds. The larval period is totally reared in a specially designed rearing house should provide ideal environmental conditions and care should be taken with scientific management to get better crops. During larval period, silkworms are usually rearing being adopted either tray or shoot method rearing. In tray method, late age silkworms are reared in bamboo trays which are arranged one over other that in ties on rearing stands. Generally, the rearing stands are arranged in two rows on either sides of the rearing ball. In this rearing, leaves pecked individually from mulberry plants and cut the convenient size and feed to them on silkworms. Usually, four feeding are given to silkworms in a day and bed cleaning is also very frequently in this type of breeding. Labor in involvement is more in this method of silkworm. In case of shoot rearing, this method of rearing very economic to farmers. It is very new technology in rearing and also scientifically very good for rearing. By adapting this uh, rearing, labor involvement is very less. Also avoid contamination to silkworm where in case of frequently touching the silkworms in the tray rearing. In this type of rearing, the entire shoots are harvested from the mulberry garden and feed to the silkworms. In this method, two to three feeding are giving to silkworms in a day and bed cleaning is also very less. It is also possible to give fresh branches of mulberry shoots to silkworms. In entire rearing process, care should be taken to avoid the contamination to silkworm for further damage by diseases. Montages, transportation, marketing of cocoons. The silkworms larva once complete its larval duration, the sixth or seventh day, the larval reduces consuming the mulberry leaf. The silkworms releases wet fecal matter and larval size also shrink and body becomes translucent and starts creaving in the bed with rises head. These are indications of the spinning larva are ready for spinning. Most of the worms are uniformly ready for spinning and picks them by hand and put them on the montages. Most of the farmers are using either bamboo or sometimes they are using other type of montages. Harvest the cocoon on fifth day during summer and the sixth day during winter season. 
the rotary montages are ideal for better cocoons quality after harvesting the cocoon should be cleaned by removing litters and good cocoons are separated from double cocoons flimmy cocoons and uh, unshaped cocoons the separated good cocoons are transported in loosely filtered gunny or cotton cloth bag during cool hours of the day either morning or evening for marketing Rosil creeling is a set of process which aims at a efficient extraction of silk filament from cocoon it is a process of combing number of ends of the cocoon filament together to form a single thread of desired denier in india the silk reeling is carried out with a reeling device such as charaka cottage basin domestic basin and multi hand reeling machines about 50% of silk is produced from charaka whereas 35% is from cottage basin and small quantity of silk reeling is from multi end reeling in india a silk produces from cottage basin is better quality than charaka but still fail to meet international grade multi end reeling machines is a suitable reeling device to produce gradable raw silk economically under indian condition charaka it is one of the oldest reeling unit in india it is dominating in india reeling sector this silk mainly used in the bulk quantity in random sector whereas in this cost of factor of raw material has to be kept low in this uh, reeling units poor quality cocoons also can be reeled economically cottage basin improved technology over that of charaka where in cooking process is separated from reeling process here stiffling of cocoons play an important role in production of quality silk yarn cocoon stiffling by steam generating a lot of slugs during reeling leading to reduce in reeling efficiency and quality of silk multi hand reeling it is an improved machines over that of cottage basin having 10 hands as against 6 hands in cottage basin this machines is developed by cstri bangalore and is suitable reeling machines is to produce gradable quality raw silk economically under indian conditions the filatures adopt this technology in silk reeling it is improved from china consist of the latest machinery this technology aims to produce superior quality raw silk of 3a to 4a grade from bivalent hybrid cocoons it has a capacity of 40 basin and incapable of producing around 35 mt of bivalent silk per annum marketing of raw silk it is one of the important sector in this indian silkculture industry here price will be the fixed based on the quality of raw silk the raw silk produced by the silk reelers are marketed directly to the viewers or through silk exchange functioning in the silkculture state in india silkculture is recognized as an industry for social and economic development and hence occupy an important role in the development of rural area of the country this industry provides employment for the rural folk throughout the year irrespective of seasons it is most suited for our country wherein majority mainly depend on agriculture for their livelihood this industry is most suitable to earn substantial income to drought conditions especially in arid and semi arid zones